Uh, we've got a variety of traps here on the table. Some are from the museum collection, so they're very old. And Bob's brought in some modern traps so we can see how traps have evolved through the ages. See, I, I forgot to put tape safety off on traps too. What? Well, so it goes through here. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to change this a bit so it's easier to do. And now we'll do it the way. The dangerous way. Uh, now, did anybody eat the beaver meat? What? I take it all, I still take it last winter at Twain Beaver and the natives ate every bit of it. And they're quite happy. I get phone calls once a week. Have you got another one? Have you got another one? Anyhow, there, now the safeties are on. Oh, cool. And the animal instantly has a broken neck. Wow. So, so, yeah. so ever. Yeah, you were explaining this is a humane trap. This is called a humane trap, but if you get hooked, you can't really use it in areas where there are pets. So it's kind of a trap line trap, except where we use it, this is what we use underwater for beaver. Put them in their channels, near entrances, and so on and so forth. So and you still use these today? Yeah, this is the main trap used today. And then there's these are the other adaptions of leg hole traps. That's, that's a reasonably modern one. They've cleaned it up here so when an animal is trapped, it doesn't break the bone in its leg. Because a lot of animals, like I said, the beaver twist off or whatever. Which was, it was pretty, pretty gross in those, there's no doubt. And then we've got this one here, like I said, it's this. And that's a, this is called a long spring. And these are coil springs. I should have my glasses on for this, <laughs> We have the first aid, Kenny. <laughs> well, these, as you see, the rust on them don't get used. But they and, still work even though they're rusty. Well, they yeah, you can survive with them. Oh. Anyhow, that's that. So that would be used for coyotes, wolves, lynx, underwater set for beaver. If you're trapping a coyote or anything, you don't use bait. Oh. You take, put it beside a post with a tree or whatever. You bury this in the ground, and so it's ground that will cover it with a little bit of newspaper with soaked in antifreeze so, or alcohol or, so it won't freeze up. And then the coyote comes along. We should, and you know, this is, we'll make this a tree. Or wolf or whatever, not cats. That is the tree. He'll smell it, you put scent on here, he goes over to smell the scent, cocks his leg, and Steps in the truck. Most coyotes are caught with not bait, but or a wolf with scent wolves. There. So something you were yeah. telling me about this trap compared to this one. These, These are, are long outlawed. springs. These are called long springs, and this one has teeth on. You're not allowed to use these. You're not allowed to use these anyway. You can use them without teeth in a drowning set for a beaver and muskrat, that's it. And this is the beaver trap size of it. This is a common one. But it's great. I found that the big one, the wolverine, can get out of it. He can, it stretches enough that he can fight his head out of it. But this one here just gets right around his head. And they're really ferocious, aren't they? They are. And the hurley's full of them. You can't go to the hurley on a fresh snowfall any day. Fine. If I'm trapping beaver on the ice, I will find their lodge and then I'll look for the air bubbles because they have little spots to pick the food and eat it. So you, you put the cotton of air on two, you, this is a single, you put this on two poles, the regular, cut a slot in the ice, okay, and then you slide that down, down into the mud. And just at the right height where the beaver will swim along his channel and boom. There would be, be two poles, so there would be, be a double spin kind of monitor. And you wire it to the pole, and if, if it's a wide channel, then you'll stick a couple more dry sticks in there because the beaver, will, if you put a green one in here, just pick it out and eat it and take it home. Anyhow. So both sides are direction in there.
Um, sometimes you'll even do a long one with steak, so just to, you know, you don't get the old smart things, you get the old ones. So. so did the native people travel a lot? Like, what happened if you didn't have all this metal work to travel? Pardon? Did the, did the, did no, they used the same as us, and I imagine everybody adapted, you know, but so snares were big. Before they had metal, they did like well, hundreds of years ago. I'm, I'm sure that there was many spears and whatever. And they had a tricky little way of doing it. For beaver, they take little willows. They do it at night. The beaver truck would work mostly at night, but they take little willows and plant, stick them in the water so that when the beaver swam through, they could see the willows and shoot oh, yeah. the ball or whatever. Yeah. But, yeah. But you said it, in your time uh, it was understood that certain areas were First Nations trapped. Yeah, themselves. all of the area from Green River south into Rutherford and Sioux was First Nations. Mm -hmm. Yeah, John Decker had Hall Creek, and then all of the area to the east of the Burkham Head River was First Nations. Still is. Mm -hmm.